We can see then that the restructuring of Europe in the aftermath of the war had a direct effect on the development of anti-Semitism. Jews were granted wider equality in many of the newly formed political structures, such as the German Republic, Poland, and the Soviet Union. However, the emergence of national entities in place of multinational and multi-ethnic empires once again forcefully exposed the Jews to questions of belonging and otherness. Beyond this, historians have noted a moral collapse that was brought about by the war, and that would also have a major impact on the growth and spread of anti-Semitism at this time. Of particular interest is Germany, a country in which Nazism would rise to become the dominant force, less than two decades later. We have already mentioned the degrading and harsh circumstances under which Germany was forced to surrender at the end of the First World War. The newly established Weimar Republic, as the German government became known, was under constant threat due to a growing economic crisis and the lack of an established democratic tradition. These elements and others had a far-reaching effect on German society, creating a fertile ground for the rise of fascism, racism, and anti-Semitism. That Germany became the country that perpetrated the assault on the European Jews is in fact uh, a somewhat surprising fact. If you had asked a European in 1910 what country would produce persecution of the Jews 25 years later, most Europeans would have probably said France or Russia. Uh, the situation for Jews in Germany in 1910 was, relatively speaking, favorable. Economic opportunities were broad and wide. There were some social restrictions that still prevailed. It was difficult for Jews to become university professors or diplomats or officers in the Prussian army. But for other walks of life, things were pretty open to Jews. And though there was a great deal of anti-Semitic agitation in the political and cultural spheres, no legislation restricting Jews was ever passed in, in, in Imperial Germany. There was nothing prior to 1916 that was comparable to the Dreyfus Affair, for instance. When does it really, when does the turn takes place? When do we begin to see a really ever more radical anti-Semitism that ends in Nazism. And part of it has to do with the collapse of the resistance to things like race, racism and anti-Semitism. We know it very well from our time too. The problem is very often not the fact that there are radical anti-Semites in many societies, but that the, way, the ways in which the society can uh, defend itself against these uh, forces seems to seem to be suddenly ineffective, and I think the First World War is a is an ex, uh, an excellent example for such a case. The war was bloody, difficult, much much longer than anyone expected, much less successful for Germany than the Germans suspected. And it ended up with an absolute collapse and disaster for the Germans. They would experience a second time, a second collapse after the Second World War, which was much worse in many, many ways. But for, in, in comparison to their experience in the past, this was an absolute catastrophe. And under these circumstances, a lot of the defense against racial hatred and hatred against uh, strangers and uh, those who don't belong and those who can be uh, blamed for the collapse and so on became much more radical than it was before.